Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? Uh, good evening, welcome to the Ramble. This is Alex Bennett, and we'll be going to our citizens panel in about 25 minutes from right now, but uh, at this very juncture in our program, uh, we have an old guest of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our favorite people that we like to talk to more than any other. What's your name again? I think it's Larry Brown, last time I checked. Yeah, okay. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. The bubble stands for fun. <laughs> and, and optimism. And optimism, yeah. How you doing, Bubs? Oh, hanging in there. I'm in, uh, I'm in smog hell right now. I, uh, my car didn't pass. What? The smog test. Oh. So you gotta. This is taking three weeks. I don't know how much longer it's gonna take, and lots of money. So why didn't? It, it, you know, I they have a, in California. They have a smog test. I don't know if they have one here in New York. Uh, they probably do, but in California, it's very stringent. And I always thought of it as a way for your your mechanic to make an extra buck. Cause yeah, he, yeah, he, for sure. He has the uh, the incentive not to pass you, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so then he tells you, yeah, you need this and you need that. So how much money do they say you have to pay out before you're going to get your smog thing cleared? He said this might run up to uh, twenty five hundred dollars. What? So, yeah. Well, what are you driving? I've got this old Toyota Camry, which. Uh, it's got 375,000 <laughs> miles on it. How, how come I'm not surprised? <laughs> Which I wanted to get rid of years ago, and now it's been so reliable, and the mileage is so high, I've become very attached to it. So yeah, I could get rid of it and get something newer, my, but I, I kind of want to save it. My friend Shecky has the same situation, uh, and Shecky has tons of money, okay? Doesn't need to save. Okay, he could buy a new car tomorrow and pay cash. All right, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Don't want to say how wealthy he is or anything like that, but he's not a Larry Bowles Brown. Okay, he could sell he could sell one baseball card and buy a new car. Exactly. Okay, so um, uh, he has a car that his mother owned when she was still alive. I think the thing maybe is over 15 years old. Maybe it's it's getting close to 20 and it, it just you know he says well it keeps running you know and I get, I don't have any real problems with it so you know and I've had it fixed several times and he never he never says to me you know what I think he'd do is buying a new car he has been picking I, I go over to see him and he picks me up at the sta train station right and mm -hmm. it's been the same car ever since I came back to New York <laughs> Does he have a house? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he has this beautiful home, which is an old home. Uh, which, if he ever sold it, they would tear it down and build a McMansion, you know, mm -hmm. on the property. But it's a, a like a, I don't know, maybe a half acre acre of property, and uh, it's uh, it's you know it's 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 really it's a nice little it's a nice little old home. It's kind of kind of fifties home. I'd love to meet him. He sounds like such an interesting guy. Oh well, he would probably love to meet you. You know, he uh, Bob's. I, I mean, uh, uh, Shecky. I love him. You know, he. As I say, he is. He's the only best friend I have left. <laughs> because all, he, uh, not because the others hated me so much, they stopped being my friend. They just dropped dead. Exactly. What, what the problem was. <laughs> You know, well, that's, we, or that either, gives us a uh, a goal. We have to outlive all these fuckers. <laughs> either that or death was preferable to knowing me. I don't know, you know. <laughs> but no, I had I had uh, my friend Bruce, and then one day he just out of a clear blue sky dropped dead. Uh, and then there was my friend Steve, who I you know here in New York was you know uh, 
my best friend, and he died. So that left Shecky. So I keep telling Shecky, you have a great responsibility here to stay alive, you know. <laughs> Uh, it shows you well, how few. Well, I want to meet him. Well, I, it shows you how few friends I have. You know, uh, but then again, you know how people always go, "So and so is my best friend." We just he's one of my best friends. Uh, I don't easily say somebody's my friend. You know, I mean, uh, I consider you a friend, but not a, you know, the kind of friend on the level with Shecky. All mm-hmm. right, you're. You're an acquaintance friend who I happen to uh, enjoy talking with, and I consider you a friend. But you know, when when you talk about best friends and so on, that's a, I think that's a small category. Yeah. yeah, I think the business we're in, we have a million acquaintances, but very few friends. Well, everybody says, "Oh, and so and so is my friend. So and so is my friend." And I'm sorry, uh, you know, uh, I use that term. Uh, you know, acquaintance, yeah, you know. I mean, I know, for instance, let's say, uh, 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 oh, uh, take a comedian. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, Patton Oswalt. Mm-hmm. Now, some people say, oh, my good friend, Patton Oswalt. Now, I knew Patton quite well. Patton, you know, used to come on the show all the time and, one time when he got a special on HBO, he thanked me for making his career and all of that. You know, that kind of friend, right? But I don't right. consider him a best friend, and I haven't heard from him in uh, f- f- uh, 10 years, 15 years. You know, but some people will say, my friend, Patton Oswald. you know. So that I'm, I'm very funny about that. Well, I would say my friend, Larry Bubbles Brown. You know, cause yeah, I, and we I, would be closer if we weren't 3,000 miles apart. I, I would probably be seeing you every couple of yeah. days. We'd probably be hanging out. You know, In the marina. Yeah, because we're the two people that co- would commiserate. Well, we live in the same area. Well, I probably wouldn't be able to afford the marina now. No. But, uh, you know, but yeah, I couldn't afford the marina. Uh uh, I, I wonder if, what would happen. Are there laws in San Francisco? Well, there must be about about how high they can raise your rent every time they raise your rent. Well, if you're under rent control, yeah, they can raise it. It's whatever the cost. Of, yeah. It's like one percent a year, so it's not much. But yeah, but I'm wondering. You know, I'm wondering uh, how much uh, I would be paying for that apartment now. It would yeah. be about uh, at least four thousand. Well, I was paying. For one of the apartments, I was paying sixteen hundred a month. The other one, I was paying, I think it was uh, twenty five hundred a month. So yeah, well, uh, you those those would be easily doubled by now. Yes, folks, I had two apartments in the same. I, uh, yeah, they're right next to each other. <laughs> yeah, well, I used one as an office. One for the office, and then the, and the other one was for for entertaining, and you know. Uh, when we would uh, get together, and I'd, I'd, I'd make a turkey on Thanksgiving and invite people over. Were you ever there for any of those? I was, and yeah. then uh, the best time was uh, doing the Palace of Fine Arts show and walking two blocks to your house yeah. on New Year's. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, then we'd have a party afterwards and do all, you know, stay up till, uh, stay up till hours that, well, actually, I <laughs> stay still... Stay up till 1 o'clock. <laughs> I still stay up late. I'm still uh, stay up later. I, I don't get to bed before about two thirty three o'clock. You know. Yeah, that's me too, and that's why uh, that's very hard to do morning radio when that's your normal. Well, what happened cycle. is being doing a morning show was against my my pattern. Against I was always your biological oh, clock. I, I was always nocturnal. Uh, the reason I yeah. think I was always nocturnal is because my father was a musician. And my mother would keep me up so when he came home from work, he could see me and be a father to me. So I sometimes was up real late. So I always became very nocturnal. And I, many times I could tell you that I never went to sleep before like 5, 6 in the morning. And then all of a sudden I get a morning show and I have to be up at the time I used to go to sleep. And that was always very unnatural for me. So how I, how I did it was I actually caught a nap in the afternoon uh, at uh, usually about 
two, one o'clock in the morning, in the afternoon rather, I would sleep until three. So then I could stay up till at least like 11 or 12 and then get up at five to go do the show. And then I will have slept, you know, pretty much a, a full day's sleep. But uh, that, that was the way I had to do it. And I did that for years. I did morning shows for years. I came to New York. I did another morning show. And the minute I was either out of work or fired or whatever, I suddenly went, oh, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. You know. <laughs> you know, I just went back to my old, my old habits. And that's where it is now. My wife goes to bed at nine nine o'clock every night. Ugh. You know, because she goes to work in the morning and she likes to, and then she gets up at four. All right. Uh, Jesus God. <laughs> usually, I'm climbing into bed about the time she's getting out. You know, so it's it's very weird. But we're nocturnal. We're nocturnal. So, uh, 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 Larry, what's new in the life of Larry Bowles Brown? Anything? Uh, uh, nothing exciting. I just worked with, uh, you, you, you're pretty familiar with the Seinfeld show, right? Yeah. I worked with, uh, Steve Heitner who played, uh, he played Kenny Banya. Yeah. Banya. The, the most uh, recognizable uh, character. Uh, <laughs> he, he, Great comic. And he really, he's just starting to sell. He's no, like I, me. He just I, realized maybe he should make some money off of having that character. Everybody, so everybody who watched Seinfeld, they probably go, well, who's Heitner, right? Let me mm -hmm. just say, or who's, who's the character Kenny Banyan? Let me just say, Mendy's has the best pea soup, Jerry. Best pea soup. <laughs> right? It's gold, Jerry. It's gold, Jerry. The pea soup at Mendy's. You know, <laughs> Mendy's. I, when, and when I worked at, uh, at uh, uh, Sirius XM, you go under the, you, you, it was in Rockefeller Center, and you could go under Rockefeller Center, and there were like all these little stores and shops and everything, and Mendy's was there. That was oh, there a, actually is a Mendy's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the names they used on Seinfeld were real. I mean, really? I uh, didn't know that. There was a J.R. There's a was. I don't know if there still is a J.R. Peterman catalog. <laughs> you know, the, the the soup Nazi actually existed. Um, um, uh, 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 Firestein. What's his name? One of the writers for Seinfeld. Um, he was working at Letterman for several years. And you go right around the corner and there's the, this, the, uh, the soup kitchen, it was called. And uh, I forget the guy's name now. And it was so-and-so's soup kitchen. And you go in there and they supposedly had the best soup in all of New York, okay? So he would go there all the time, and because of the way the guy ran the place, they called him the soup Nazi. Because you had to, you literally had to do that whole thing about walk up to him, give him the money, tell him in a plain uh, speak uh, what you wanted, and then uh, he packages up, you take it, you leave, right? And so they would call him the soup Nazi. And sometimes if he didn't do that, he wouldn't give you the soup, all right? so. When he then left Letterman and went over to Seinfeld, uh, he um, um, uh, uh, wrote this episode about the soup Nazi, and it became, you know, very famous. I think it's one of the most famous Seinfeld episodes of all time. Yeah. And the guy who ran the place hated it. <laughs> <laughs> But they, the lines that once were out the door were now around the block. So he couldn't really complain because everybody knew who the soup Nazi was. <laughs> and and um, uh, he, this guy, Fierstein, I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, Spike Fierstein. Spike Fierstein. Fierstein. You're right, Spike Fierstein. Uh, he... Um, uh, she, Jackie and I went over to the soup. We were going. We used to go buy the soup Nazis because uh, we were. We always went to this place where we, I liked the calamari they had and so on. We'd go there for lunch. So we're going over for lunch one day, and all of a sudden there's Spike Firestein. He and he's on the corner, and he said, "Where are you? Go hey, Spike, I haven't seen you in a long time because he had worked at the Letterman show." He said, "Where are you going?" He says, uh, "I'm going over to get some soup." 
Uh, it's the first time I've been there since I wrote that episode. I wonder how he's going to take it. <laughs> 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 but supposedly he was not happy with being called the soup Nazi. Wow. But it made him a fortune because he opened up all these other soup kitchens. He, he franchised it. I think the franchises went out of business. So, You know, you take something that's really good at one location, and then you try to franchise it, and it just doesn't work. You yeah. Know, there's something about the fact that the guy's there making the soup every day instead of now there's a location here and a location there, and so-and-so's in charge of that location, and, you know. But... Uh, so much for the soup Nazi. Yeah, it was amazing that, that as funny as that character was, they only used it on one show. Well, it was towards the end. I think it was in the last year of Seinfeld. So but they did use him again, though, in the final episode. In the final, yeah, the big yeah. finale, which was a turkey. But. Uh, uh, where all the characters that are being reprised on the show are sitting around having lunch or something, and uh, he's serving them, you know. And, uh, uh, so, uh, and Kenny Banya, I think he told me he did six episodes. Yeah. But they didn't usually call people. Like the other, other sitcoms back in those days, if you had a good walk on spot, you'd get your own series. They'd have a spinoff, but they didn't do that with anybody on Seinfeld. Well, Seinfeld never did spinoffs, if you no. think, think about it. you know. Uh, but it was a great job to have because you got known. I mean, uh, Heitner's working to this day i see him all he's the time. working he, his recognition is unbelievable from that and that's like 20 years ago yeah but what i like watching is i'm dying up here on uh, showtime because there are a lot of people that i do know who are working that show um one of which i've only is, seen the first episode which was not very good but someone told me it got better yeah rick overton is on the show and rick's an old friend Mm -hmm. And I can say that. I, I've actually talked to him in the last couple of years. Um, and uh, Dana Gould was on it last week. Oh, really? Yeah, and, and Dom Herrera had a heart attack. I mean, on, <laughs> on the show. On the show, okay. Yeah, and he didn't have a single line on the episode. He's just lying in a bed with a mask on him. <laughs> and I, he's, he's ballooned up a little bit. He's pretty heavy now. But... To my remembrance, uh, Don Marrero was one of the funniest comics I ever heard in my life. Oh, yes. When I first got in a comic, I kept hearing about Don Marrero. You got to see this guy. Don Marrero was so funny that I would have to ask him to stop because I was hurting. You know. Um, if anybody gets a chance, there are some HBO one-night stands that are on HBO, you know, Go or whatever. You know, they're on-demand service with... Don Herrera, watch him. He is just, it's, it's unbelievable. There's another example of a comic who, sh you know, if, you, if, if being funny was the only criterion to making it in the comedy business, then Don Herrera would have been huge. Yeah. I remember Dana Gould told me years ago that he said when, when it comes to getting huge, funny, there's like 10 things and funny is like eighth place. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great agent is number one. Great agent, uh, looks. <laughs> yeah, but agent is, I think, number one. You know, if you, you never had a great agent, I never had a great agent. I never had an agent. <laughs> yeah, I had one in San Francisco, but he was the worst. Um, he, um, when, I, when I got fired, this is absolutely true. When I got fired, finally, in San Francisco... Uh, they replaced me with Johnny Steele, and um, uh, who didn't succeed very well with that show. Um, and I found out as my agent was negotiating my farewell from the company, you know, and what how much money I would get and all that kind of stuff. I found out he was also negotiating for Johnny Steele. <laughs> and that is a no-no in the business. You know, you can you know, you can't represent somebody who is taking over from somebody who's getting fired that you represent. Oh, well, wow, that's uh in the uh, the last uh 
Larry Sanders show where Bob Odenkirk played yeah. Sanders' agent, and he's all, but he was also negotiating for uh, John Stewart. <laughs> right. And, and Larry Sanders to him, isn't that a conflict? He goes, well, not for me. <laughs> Well, I, we said to our guy, that's a conflict, and he immediately so-called dropped Johnny, although I think he just handed him off to another one of his friends and shared in the receipts of it all, you know. I, but th- no, that, John, I never knew that. Wow. That, yeah, that was my great agent, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, he had, he had, no, he, 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 he was, it, it was in his best interest that I lose the job, Okay. So, uh, wow. yeah, so that, 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 when we found that out, we went ballistic and he knew that he had been caught doing something that was kind of like not right. You know, he, he, he should be sitting there negotiating with my bosses not to fire me. Exactly. You know, or running around town looking for a job for me, which he wasn't doing, you know, uh, because he was rooting for Johnny at that point. So, yeah, that was all part of the part of the deal. Uh, but I won't go back into that. That was how many years ago? Come on, you can 20. tell. 20? Is it 20? 21. Yeah, wait a minute. I left in 87. Yeah. Uh, 97. 97. So, so, wow, you're right. It's about 21 years, actually. 21 in July. It, oh, you know the, the time I left. Yeah, well, yeah, I remember your last show was a uh, we. It was a live show out on Walnut Creek at some brewery. Right. It was. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was. It was a Friday. I'm thinking it was a. Fr- it was a Friday. Okay, it couldn't have been the first Friday in July. It was the fourth. Of, it wouldn't have been the fourth of July. So it must have been the end of June then. The, yeah. Uh, then the end of June. Do you know that when I when I got let go at Sirius was the end of June? That must be a bad month for me in getting fired. <laughs> the, the, the Ides of June. Well, you know, they made a deal. I made a deal with them. They said, "You, we, 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 any way you want to go, we'll honor that." Okay. And I said, "How I want to go is I don't want anybody to know." I said, "I want to do my last show, and I don't want." people sitting there with long faces, you yeah. know, uh, I want to do the best show I can. At the end of the show, I'll say, hey, listen, by the way, this is my last show. Goodbye. Thank you. It's been a wonderful run, right? And I would leave. So we, uh, so they say, okay, no, we will not let anybody know. Nobody will know, okay? So now it's, it's the show in Walnut Creek. We're doing one of the Breakfast with Bennett's. And I'm, I go there, I'm fully expecting that, you know, this is the day that I'm going to quit. You know, this is the day I'm gonna, not going to quit. I'm going to say, hey, it's over with. They let me go or whatever. And I get there and there's a, there are newspapers at this gig. And in the Oakland Tribune and I think maybe also the Chronicle was a, were stories about how I was being let go. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, the, the, all the press was out there. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and I show up to the gig, and the press is out there. Even TV trucks are out there. And I'm going, what's this about? And I get out, and they say, what's this about you being uh, fired from uh, Live 105? And I said, I don't know anything. And I went inside, and I was seething. I was just pissed. Because you know, I wanted to do my last show as my as a, as just like any show and do the best show I possibly could. Now I'm sit, standing there trying to do this show while people in the audience are reading the newspapers and looking <laughs> and looking up from their newspapers at me and, and with with long faces, right? Like. Oh, the end has come. Oh, gee. You know, and I'm not saying a word. I'm just doing the show. And now here it is, and that was. I don't even know. Were you there at all? I was there. I remember. You were there. So you remember, I just did the show like it was any other show. You did the show. People came up to me yeah. afterwards. Is this a joke? They were crying. It was horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. Was trying, I'm trying to do a comedy show, and people are crying. People are literally crying, yeah. So I, so I, uh, um, I, I see my boss. 
and I go over to him and I said, what the fuck happened? How did this get out? He said, I think one of the salesmen told a newspaper so he would get in good with them in order to sell some time. And I went, Jesus fucking Christ. I think it was Freddie Avener who was a salesman there. And I said, well, I said, you know, he said, so what are you going to do? I said, oh, I said, I'll go up there uh, and I'll say goodbye. You know, so at the very end of the show, I got up. And I looked out at the audience and I said, well, thank you for coming and thank you for joining us with Breakfast with Bennett. And I'll see you next, uh, I'll see you next time. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, think, I don't think I said I'll see you next week, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll see you again. I'll see you Monday. I'll, oh, yeah, I'll see uh -huh. you Monday. Okay? I didn't say what Monday, but I said I'll see you Monday. Mm -hmm. And I left the stage, not quitting. And I looked at my boss and I said, now you fucking sort this out. <laughs> and I left and we got in a, on a plane immediately and went to Vegas for the weekend. <laughs> so, you know, but that was my exit from San Francisco radio. Hey, listen, I just looked and we've run out of time. It flies. That's what happens when you're having fun. Thank you, Larry. Right, thank you, Alex. And thank you for letting me talk, Larry. <laughs> Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, welcome now to the uh, the uh, <coughs> to the ramble. Um, I'm not going to open the lines yet because I'm going to talk a little bit here. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I need we need to talk. I um, I hate um, Facebook. I hate being on it. I I hate the you know it it's supposed to be a form of expression, and uh, ideally it would be the form of expression that would be uh, you know you say what you want to say, and then but. Anytime you say anything, anytime I make and have an opinion about anything and I express it on my very own Facebook page, all of a sudden I've got these people clamoring, oh, that's all wrong and you've got the wrong idea, Alex, and blah, 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 blah. Well, fuck you. Fuck all of you. I really mean it. Fuck you. Blow me. So today, uh, I'm walking down the street. I'm coming back from the gym. And on the corner in front of the pharmacy, uh, I, 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 I see this, okay? Uh, and it was uh, something that's not an unusual sight in New York. Somebody uh, fall, either fallen asleep on the pavement or he could be dead. You never know, but nobody ever stops to see if the guy's okay, all right? They just let him lie there, all right? And uh, there he was, lying there on the uh, on the on the on the pavement. Uh, and so I came home and I decided I was going to put on my Facebook page. And what I titled it, what I put as a title was, and very sarcastically, uh, what's better than a good snack and a nice nap, you know? And people were starting to write, "Oh, that's in bad taste, Alex. Oh, you're terrible." It's almost like I was. Uh, I was Roseanne. They're looking for the next Roseanne, and I was going to be it. And they were going crazy over that, not realizing that what I was saying was, A, a comedic, satirical comment on this situation, which obviously is very bleak and tragic because that guy shouldn't have had to buy that food. He sh should have been given to him, and he should have been given a place to sleep. You know, I once said that, uh, the, uh, in New York City, if somebody is passed out on the pavement, you go say, you say, isn't that pathetic? But if we took that same guy right there, okay, picked him up just like he is, and dropped him off in a pasture in upstate New York, they'd say, how bucolic, how nice, person catching a nap out in the midday sun in the in the in the wild field. But because it's on that gum stained cement, uh, it's pathetic. And uh, yes, I was joking about it, but I wasn't joking about it so much as I was trying to make a satirical comment about it. But nobody got it, or at least the people who wrote in didn't get it. Jason got it. 
by the way. Uh, thank you, Jason. He wrote, lighten up everybody. And I took the thing off. I just said, fuck it. I just, you know, I don't, I don't need the, uh, the grief of this. But I just went, you know, you can't do anything without somebody trying to be fucking politically correct. And um, in that case, they were. I think I'll leave that picture up all night. That's what I'll do. And we'll, uh, you know. Plus, uh, and so I was, I was just, I've just been depressed about the whole thing ever since. And uh, I just, I'm, I've, I've been thinking about I'm ne never going to post anything else again on Facebook. I've threatened this before. And then I went back on my promise, on my threat. And I really think that I, that I should do that. I should uh, just uh, do away with it once and for all and uh, not, uh, not put anything, post anything up. I may not even post the shows any longer on Facebook. Plus, with everything we're learning every day about Facebook, you kind of ask yourself, hey, uh, isn't that uh, terrible, you know? It hasn't Facebook turned into this horrible, horrible company. So, uh, I, and I don't want to help make them rich anymore, you know. But more than that, I just, I just don't want the grief that I get every time I try and say something or do something. And and these people who are like holier than thou and uh, oh, you know, oh, that's bad taste, Alex. Well, fuck you, blow me. It's not bad taste. What's bad taste? is that that guy has to be in such a condition that he passed out in front of a CVS pharmacy, where, by the way, nobody in the CVS pharmacy, which has a, a, a medical kind of unit inside it, because they've made them into mini hospitals or you know, mini drop-in clinics, nobody came out to see if the guy was okay or alive or anything else. What's pathetic is the fact that that even exists, not what I had to say about it, but nobody seemed to get that. And I felt compelled to publish that picture because it was, it was a sad commentary. But anyway, so I've been depressed all day about that and, and decided that's it for me and Facebook. You know, you can, you can post whatever you want to on Facebook uh, uh, I'll maybe post the shows. I don't even know if I'm going to do that anymore. That seems to be uh, getting to be a, a pain in the ass. Uh, I may just post these shows on the gabnet.net page and uh, obviously YouTube because uh, we're recording this show now. And uh, let's just hope that we're, you know, uh, that we're, um, uh, you know, that that will satisfy people. But uh, screw with putting it on Facebook. Or, well, yeah, I like it, and then this, and then that, and then him, and everybody has an opinion about how to run things, and then me. And I, it's a pain in the ass. Anyway, the, the phones are open. Nobody's calling, but uh, maybe they will, and then maybe they won't. I understand tonight will be a full of Phil night, uh, a Phil full night, uh, because he supposedly is, uh, he, he said he was going to be out every day but Thursday this week so what have you so anyway I'll wait another two minutes and I'm going home wait a minute I am home damn it uh, I could just sit here and bore the shit out of you um, you know uh, but I I did have my uh, uh, I did have my little extra piece to say and I said it and now I'm waiting for people to call there we go here comes Ray Renati I can always I can always count on Ray. Let's see, is he going to be indoors or is he going to be outdoors? He looks like he's indoors, ladies and gentlemen. Ray Renati is not out in the field. Hi, Ray. How are you? Wait a minute. We don't hear you. Uh, we don't. We're not there. Now you now you hear me. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Okay. Now we hear you perfectly. There we go. And Phil's here as well. All right, it's a showdown. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, <laughs> uh oh. What what does your shirt say? What part of? I, oh, I can't see the whole thing. Uh, uh, let's see. What part of? Don't you understand? And it's something that you can't understand, right? It's Chopin or something. Uh, yeah, it's Chopin. Yeah, I think so. Hey, hello, Someone Rob. Told me once. Rob Alfano has joined us. Hello, Rob. Hello. I've been getting to find out today why you don't go to use Facebook. I fucking hate Facebook. Yeah, I <laughs> hate it too. I hate it too. The world's cancer. The computer cancer of the world. The computer Facebook. cancer of the world. 
Yeah. Hey, Alex, what yeah. you were talking about today, just now about people doing that to you and you do anything controversial. Yeah. I, that's happened to me a couple of times. It sucks so bad. Yeah, this it, world changed because of, because of it. Everybody is because everybody's so used to spouting out an opinion that now I don't care where you are, you're you're getting hit with these opinions, and it's just like everybody's on Facebook. Everybody's got an opinion, regardless of what you say, what you do. It's your Facebook page, and people have an opinion. Yeah, and, and it's, and, it's usually the goody two shoes people like yeah. like who. Who are protecting the rights of whoever you're destroying that's at the in, moment? That's in bad taste to show that picture of that person yeah, and make yeah. a comment like there's nothing like an uh, like a uh, uh, you know a nap right after a nice snack, you know. And oh. he's sitting, he's lying there with a box of Popeyes chicken, or hopefully an empty box of Popeyes chicken. That's funny. That's and, just called funny. And it was in front of a CVS, as I said. And inside, they have a clinic. Why didn't somebody go out to see if the guy was alive? I would not be want to be an up-and-coming comedian today. Oh, oh. T talk to, I talked to them about it. I talked to Bubs about it. I talked to Slayton about it. I talked to a lot of people about it. You know Seinfeld will not work colleges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will, yeah. And he has one I, of the cleanest, straightest acts in the business. And he won't play colleges. You know. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, I, I watched Samantha B's apology on her show, uh, and I I I lost all respect for her because she apologized. Uh, it's yeah. tough, you know. She she apologized. She did a good apology, however. She was saying, "I'm not apologizing so much to uh, uh, the the people that I offended, the person that I offended, or that was the butt of the joke." I'm apologizing to all you people out there because I took the 24-7 news cycle away from things that were important, like kids who were being snatched away from their parents at the borders, you know, and, and had it concentrate on me. And that's what I feel guilty about. And I, I thought think that was a pretty good explanation. You know? But think about how fucked up the world is if, if everything can stop for you know all the stuff going on in the news forget about trump but just everything going on in the news all of the the terrorism the the high school shootings and all that stuff if if everything stops because somebody made a comment could you imagine 20 years ago people made comments all the time it's just everybody's in everybody's ass all the time now we're, we're on top of each other yeah. we're too close we're over communicating with each other and now it, you could just make one little statement somewhere in your little corner of the world and everyone around the world is reacting to your statement how you, fucked up is that you know i always used to say when i did uh, radio programs i did talk shows i said I'm only one statement away from losing my job, you know, that at any moment I could say something wrong and I would be out of a job. But I knew pretty much what those things were and I strayed away from them, right? I, I pulled back from them. Sometimes I would look over into the abyss and play with it a little bit, but then I'd come back again. Today, I don't know what you might say that would like get people crazy. If I... Hey. If I had done that picture with that same caption on uh, a late night TV show, I would no longer have my show the next day. You know? I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, Phil seems like he's working on something there. Your mic? <laughs> well, he could, could work on turning his mic on. He doesn't uh, have his headphones uh, uh, on. I got some. Yeah, I, I, there's a there's a problem with this thing. I'm looking at a new board. Uh, any I, one of the channels went out, and it's it's wow. kind of, uh, it's got a hiss in the in the earphones. So so why did you get a new board? Why did you get a new board? Why why? Because I have microphones that need a board. No, but why did you get a new one? I haven't gotten a new oh, one yet. I, oh, I thought you said you. Oh, I thought you said you got a new I'm, one. I'm looking. Yeah. Uh, although I may not need it. Um, yeah. Well, let's I, for, forget about the tech talk. Yeah. No, I went to the cardiologist today. No. Oh. No. Wasn't good. What? Ah. Yeah. What uh, you, oh, oh, come on now! Don't tell. Don't tell. Do I have to add you to my prayers again? Looks like it. Uh, yeah, what happened was uh, they gave me a stress uh, EKG. 
Uh, well, yeah. they, usually they give you a stress test, and in my case, they just have like uh, Marjorie come down and just badger me for an hour. Yeah, and same and, thing. and that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. anyway, uh, I get the stress EKG today around three o'clock, and uh, I'm six minutes on the treadmill. I'm having a conversation. I wasn't even out of breath. I'm having a conversation. I was tired. Six minutes. They're raising the thing. They're making it faster. Uh, I figured all was good. And then she looks at the thing and she says, no, nah, I see a problem. So they took it to, they took the reading and they said, now nah, we want you to come back and they're going to do another uh, type of stress test where they stick dye in you and then they put you in an MRI. Well, it, and Jeff they seems see to what, know what you're talking about here. Yeah, they want to yeah. see what the blockages are. Uh, and uh, so that'll be June 19th. Oh, boy. Uh, and they told me, don't... Uh, don't do anything strenuous. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, quit your job and and don't call out Gabnet. You know something. Yeah. I love I love the the uh, the uh, what can I call it the bedside manner of doctors today because I was talking to my ex wife last yesterday, and she was talking about the fact that you know she had pancreatic cancer and now she's been found to be a hundred percent cancer free. And she yeah. went to the hospital, and some doctor who was working on it says, "Oh well, it usually comes back." Yeah. yeah right. Well, you know, where 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 in bedside manner class did you I'm fail? Cancer free, and now I got heart problems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, you know, worst comes to worst. I mean, I don't think it's that bad. I mean, I I'm only short of breath after a great amount of exertion, so. My feeling is, is maybe I got some blockages. Uh, maybe they'll give me the balloon. Maybe they'll give me a stint. Uh, a yeah. couple yeah. of days, I'll be out. I'll, I'll be as uh, as good as Jeff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but in the meantime, you got to worry I'm about it. They don't cut me open. You in know, the meantime, want to replace. In, in the meantime, you got to worry about it, and that's bullshit. Hey, you know, on. yeah, that, that's bullshit. I'm when you very gotta, happy that you went. Yeah. Well, I, I'm happy too. I mean, yeah. uh, you're not you're not over yet. So no, you know, I do I do 25 no. minutes on the on the uh, on the bike in the gym every day, and I'm never out of breath. Never. They, they I sweat, make, but I'm never out of breath. What? They make the angle and the speed of the treadmill such that. But I I, I wasn't out of breath. I was tired, but I wasn't out of breath. I was well, actually conversing with the. Uh, with, with the gal that was taking the yeah, test. Yeah, but they're watching They're watching the EKG, not, right? Right. With, yeah, yeah, it's what they're seeing, not what, you know, what you're experiencing, I don't exactly. think. Exactly. Well, although I could have a, I had a totally uh, good conversation. Uh, you know, I wasn't gasping for air or anything. And, uh, you know, so I got a feeling, okay, I got some blockages. Well, you know uh, what, what happened? I, uh, I went and I took that, I told you, the nuclear stress test. Yeah. Because they, I couldn't get on a treadmill uh, because of uh, uh, the fact that I, they, they, I for re some reason, an EKJ was not reading me right because of some mm -hmm. kind of electrical problems that I've got in my system that are just, you know. So they, get, so they gave me the shot of stuff, which made my heart pound like a little bunny rabbit. And yeah. uh, uh, then they, they put, injected a nuclear dye in me. And then we yeah. had they had me go out to lunch for like about forty five minutes, and then yeah. I come back and they they check me out and they see where the radiation is going. Well, after it's all over, I say, well, okay, thank you, and I said everything looks good. And they said, yeah, it looks like you're fine, uh, but uh, here's a here's a word of warning: for the next twenty four hours, don't go go near any pregnant women. <laughs> I said, why? They said, you're radiated. You've got uh, radiation in you. I said, you put that shit in me, you tell me not to get near pregnant women, and I, you think I'm going to live through it? I mean, that's the most disgusting thing I ever heard, and you never asked my permission to put nuclear isotopes into my bloodstream. Well, that's what they're going to do with me, uh, but they're actually they're going to put me on the uh, treadmill again, mm -hmm. and then they're going to send me into a, a camera room uh, I don't know. Maybe it's like a CT scan or something. I I, I don't know what it is. Uh, Jeff, tell him what? what it is. Uh, Jeff, turn on uh, your mic. Turn turn yeah, on your mic. Up. Wait a minute. We got to wait for Jeff to turn Jeff, on his mic. Jeff, we Mike, can't hear you, Jeff. Still wait a minute. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, no, I. You're gonna go through this 
extensive procedure to find actually how much blood problems you're having, whether you have heart valve problems, yeah. whether it's vessel pro vessel problems, and hopefully they're going to decide what kind of surgery they're going to give you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm hoping for the minimal invasive surgery. Well, I mean, everything these days are pretty minimally invasive as, yeah. as compared to uh, years when ago. I started when I was 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, there was a time when they couldn't even do anything about it, okay? So be thankful for that. Hey. Oh, yeah. I remember, I remember being like a teenager, Yeah. and I remember my doctor, and I think he was 40 years old. Yeah. And he died. Wow. Yeah. He had a heart attack. It, he was died. he sitting in his office while he was giving you a checkup smoking a cigarette? <laughs> they they used to do that, Camels. you know. They used to do that. Camels. Because because Camels. according to the advertising, nine out of ten doctors recommend luckies. Yeah. Yeah. For what? Well, for a faster death, you know. Yeah. Lucky yeah. strike means fine tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. L S M F T. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, anyway, yeah, yeah you know, uh, I figured I'd let you know, uh, but uh, yeah, well, the, just just keep going because yeah. you know, yeah, uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm not Pete Spade, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, you're not, you know, you're also not, uh, you're not, you know, you don't look pale or anything like that, you know. So uh, you don't look as healthy as Jeff, but you look, uh, yeah. you know, you look okay. Uh, what, you mean to say, Jeff? You guys, Jeff, put on your put on your. Wait a minute, do me a favor, Jeff. Uh, turn your yeah. sound down a little bit, and also, oh, uh, turn on your camera so we can see you. Jeff. And there's a hum. You see, there's a hum there. Chris. Like, Chris, Chris. 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 Excuse me, Chris. Chris, can you hear me? Yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Turn your sound down, okay? Because there's a little bit like, of a hum, and then turn on your camera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, well, it, it, you know, down, down at the bottom there are a bunch of little things. One of them's a camera, and yeah, can, raise right. one. There you go. Oh, Good. Hey, I just wanted to. Turn it down. Yeah, turn your audio down, will you, if you can, because How's a, that? a little more, because there's a hum kind of coming through. Is that better. And also, your move your mouthpiece away from you a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but uh, there. Pat your head and rub your stomach. Yeah, but there is a little bit of a hum in there, but, you know, whatever. If you can go, go see in, Phil's cardiologist tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, well, we'll just wait and see what happens. I have my tooth bothering me. I think I'm going to have to get some more antibiotic put in it, and I think it's going to have to get pulled. So uh, Just tie a string to the door and around the tooth. Yeah, but, you know, again, you. compared to your problem, my problem is, you know, the fucking yeah. tooth, you know. Uh, well, it's it's, yeah. and it's not where you can just see remember, it. Just remember, you can get an infection from a tooth thing. Yeah, I know and that. And that could give you a heart problem. It could. It's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not feeling very well today, but the tooth isn't hurting. It's just a, a sensitive, let's put it that way. Uh, so I don't know. It could be a Ray least. a chance to say something? He's oh, yeah, I just, yeah. I just wanted to say, Phil, you know, uh, so... I have two exam. My my dad takes care of himself. He actually has a car carotid artery system. Carotid in him. artery. Yeah. Yeah. To, carotid. Yeah. 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 Carotid artery right. system. My brother invented it, and it's in my dad's chest. It's a by hmm. like, coincidence. But my uh, my other brother uh, didn't take care of himself. He didn't get the stress test, um, and died. He died of a heart attack on the golf course. Wow. Uh, and he had a strange cough for for a week before and all this stuff. So well, yeah, just pay, just pay I, attention to how you feel. You know, uh, I, if you get some I, weird I, symptom or something, you just go yeah. you just go right in. My chiropractor, you know, I told him I said I'm achy everywhere. He says no. He says you're 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 in line. Uh, I said, but I'm achy. All my joints hurt. And uh, he says, well, he says you probably got uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, it could be allergies, food allergies, because it's yeah. it's 
about inflammation when that That's happened. It, inflammation. So it felt like I had inflammation everywhere. He says, yeah, you know, he says, it's got, it's got to be something else. And I said, you know, I walked up a customer's driveway the other day, and I was so out of breath, I was panting for about 10 minutes. I, I got up to the top of the driveway. It was long. It was steep. Uh, and it wasn't exactly finished, and, and it really, it really uh, stre- stressed me, or to the point where I was out of breath. That's and, probably your heart. Yeah. So I said, "Hey, something's not right," and uh, you know. So they, yeah, you know, I'll just take it easy for a week. So I tell you, my tooth's bothering me. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> I, you know, and that could, that could lead to heart issues. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and over the long term, but uh, you know. Well, how much longer term can you wait? <laughs> well, I mean, it's been a day or two that it's been acting up. Nah, you've been complaining for months. No, no. I, I went to the dentist, and she put in some medicine in there. She said, we'll do it one more time. So I have one more time. She says, then we'll, then we'll just pull the damn thing, you know. And then I'll get a little phony plug to put in there because it's uh, who, I don't need to spend $5,000 to get an implant to fill the space, you know. Uh, What's all a the way in the plug? Back. What? What do you mean by it's a, a phony it's a little, it's a little denture. Uh, they uh, always gave them to me when I had the implants. They'll I'll have one this time in case I might get an implant. And what it does is it keeps the teeth spaced, and it's like a little phony tooth. And it just you, know, you just push it up in there and clicks in. And I find that I go a whole day, and I don't even notice it's there. You know, it's better than having a real tooth. So uh, why should I spend $5,000 to fill a space that you can't even see? Uh, you know, when I can spend $750, get this little denture, and it'll probably take care of me for the next couple of years. And if they break once a year, it's still better than, you know, the implant. Yeah. So, and I think they're worried about infection getting up there. The uh, what, yeah. what, what do you mean, the with, with, with the denture? Yeah. No, 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 they don't worry about that at all. Uh, she said, oh, just okay. keep it clean. No, no, because it just becomes a healed space. And then, you yeah. know, oh, you, okay. and you wear one of these anyway, Bef- for the six months until they actually put the implant in. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I had to do that. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I have two implants in front here, and they yeah. and I had that six months. I had this little like these little flipper thing, and I had to stick in that looked like two front teeth. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little. And I could do like yeah. a magic trick. I could go open my mouth and close it, and it looked like I had no front teeth. It gross people out on purpose. Yeah, so but now if I, my front teeth were going, if I had to be pulled, I, I would absolutely get a, uh, you know. Yeah, I like the little denture thing. To get it? No, get it. Get an implant. Oh yeah, that's what I have. Two of them right here. Yeah, they're like five uh, grand a piece. Do you ever five see grand those a piece. teeth? Yeah. Do you ever see those teeth you can buy that are like uh, a southern hillbilly teeth? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You just get a set of those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What, what are they called? Bubba teeth? Yeah. Flipper. I don't know, but they use them on Saturday Night Live all the time. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I, I I think that's a good idea. Uh, but anyway, so I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, who's going to, to begin with, I don't want to spend the money for the implants because who knows how much longer I'm going to live. God forbid they should like put the, the implant in finally and I think drop dead of a heart attack or something, you know. So, looking corpse. Right. So that being the case, I just as soon get myself a little doodad to put up in there plus if i didn't even get one you couldn't see it it'd be all the way back here so hey how come i see all of these advertisements for very inexpensive in, uh, tooth implants well yeah um uh, and i haven't actually researched them okay but there are places where they will give they'll say they give you an implant for like fifteen hundred dollars something yeah. like that but you know there's mm-hmm. other stuff involved to begin with tooth's got to be pulled where the implant's going to go, okay? That's first of all. Then there is the spacer denture that you should get to keep the teeth apart while the the healing process is taking place, and that's another seven fifty. You know, so, so when you add one thing and another, all of a sudden that fifteen hundred becomes about three thousand. Geez, know? that's like pulling teeth. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, but to get the, uh, you know, my guy who's the guy who literally pioneered the process and it's the most perfect guy ever i mean he's put more of these in than any human being on the planet uh mm-hmm. he charges me a total when i'm through with everything about five thousand dollars oh yeah there's also the uh the uh, mri for your mouth and not the mri the ct ct what is it the c scan uh, uh, 
uh, CT scan. A t, a c, a CT, CT scan of your mouth. Although my one dentist already has a CT scan of my mouth, so he doesn't have to, uh, uh, you know, take another one. But it, uh, all these things being equal, uh, it, it, it can get pretty expensive, five to six grand for, for one of those things. But there are places that are doing them cheaper. Now, I don't know what they're doing. You know how, you know how long t they've been doing implants? Uh, probably 10 years? No, it's been done for about maybe several hundred years. Oh, that's right. Uh, Washington had wooden teeth, I no, suppose. No, no that, that isn't it. That isn't it. Uh, tribes in the in the south in a, in the South Seas uh, used to when somebody lost a tooth, they would take some kind of like stick or bamboo thing and drive it into the person's jaw, and then they would just put a phony tooth on it, and that was like the, that was the first use of implants. It was easier after they shrunk the head. It was easier after they shrunk the head. Yeah, yeah, that's for damn sure. Uh, so anyway, um, um, so I'm, I'm sick of uh, Facebook and, and the people who inhabit it. And so I'm just never going to post again on Facebook. I may post the shows. I may not even do that. You know, if you want them, you can get them. You can go over to gabnet.net. The shows are over there. They're over on YouTube, you know. I use the messenger. I uninstalled the app on my phone. I still have it on the computer. So if I do want to look at the feed i can look at it mm -hmm. but i i was looking at it too much it, it it can become obsessive and so by taking it off my phone it it hasn't been a well, how, uh, yeah. how many here you, how many here use facebook i know rob doesn't you use it right uh, chris uh uh, yeah, right, your, yeah, your show's keeping me from being on it right now, so I thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're 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 a great alternative to uh, to that and masturbation. Mm -hmm. So you know, it. Uh, I use it, but I try less and less of it because it's got too much crap on anyway. So it's just well, I just don't like it's the way. It's no longer fun. I don't like the way people mm -hmm. act on it. They're not civil. That's amazing. You know, uh, I, I, you know, one of your uh, listeners uh -huh. uh, uh, on my message gave me a rant this morning at 630 in the morning. Uh, I, I wake up and she, uh, she says, uh, I can't listen to you on Alex's show anymore. Uh, I, so, you know, she says that, uh, you know, uh, what I had said the other night, and I don't remember what it was. Uh, it was probably that I liked Trump. Uh, that that was enough to set her off and and to write you know and she was fairly nasty and you know I'm I'm not nasty back you know uh, yeah who what's her name uh, Louise oh Louise that, oh yeah 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 she yeah. Uh, she's a regular viewer and yeah, writer and, and so on what and, and she's a nice person you oh, know yeah, and very I, nice and, uh, uh, you know I I, I, I Try to be respectful well, and, and 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 answer in a in a respectful way rather than. Well, I get go down I get people that say I can't listen to your show because of Phil, uh, yeah. and I tell them, well, Phil's not going anywhere, you know. And uh, if you don't want to listen, you don't want to listen. But quite frankly, and that's, why, that's why radio stations are the way they are today. There's no discussion because nobody wants to hear an opposing opinion. Right. Yeah. And that, so they part of the big problem that we have. Well, so they have radio stations that the left can listen to where they feel safe and their opinions are being catered to. Or you yeah. can go over to a station where the right wing's tastes and opinions are being catered to. And all people want out of their radio is for radio to validate their, their, their opinions. Yeah. Right? You know, like KGO used to be a good station. They'd have... They'd have good discussions and and people of all opinions, and now it's just filler crap. Well, I found out what's wrong with this show. It's sold, it's changed. Uh, we, yeah. uh, what's wrong with this show and why we don't get huge amount of, of listeners is because we involve ourselves in the art of uh, discussion. And there is an art to discussion, and there's something very good about discussion, and this show would not be the same without Phil. You know, I, I don't agree with him. You agree, right, yeah, Rob? I yeah, no. I agree. I, I don't agree with him either, but you yeah, know, yeah, the the opinion is important to have because it's out there. Yeah, yeah, but, and there's a lot of people that think like I do, or right? As I do, right? 
And Which we find astonishing. Well, right. no, but you know something? <laughs> what, what, what we're doing, <laughs> Phil, Phil, what we're doing is we're alienating both sides. Because the left doesn't want to listen to the show because you're on it. And the right doesn't want to listen to the show because I'm on it. Yeah, you know? pretty much right. You know, yeah. So who are we getting? All we're getting are really open-minded people who want to hear a decent discussion among a bunch of basically friends here or video Interesting. friends. Interesting all talk. That's all just, uh, you know, uh, interesting talk that sometimes gets a little bit irreverent uh, around the topic. We, we we probably go to joking more than you would hear anywhere else. Yeah. You know, but, um, you know, there are definite when when you're not here, we don't really have discussions about the other side because there's no sense in it because we all agree and go yep 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 and that's the end of it well and, and the problem is we also surround ourselves most of the time with people who agree with us in our private lives you know i noticed, i noticed since i started getting uh fox news on my road by the way we're losing viewers like crazy right now what you don't yeah, want to you don't want to hear start arguing huh I don't see how you can instantly see a change in viewership when uh, something happens within a few seconds and it takes minutes to log on to uh, I don't know we're down to like about twenty three people watching this ah uh, you know well I'd have yeah. hundreds if all of you were left wingers or all of you were right wingers and we were <laughs> telling a certain audience everything they wanted to hear. And, and I hey, find that hey, so... Let's try this. Phil, try to be a left-winger with a I'm lot of fervor. Try. I'm going to try. Oh, Obama, he's so good. Uh, <laughs> nice guy. He can't even That's convincing. convincing. You know, you, you, you can't even come up with a convincing three seconds on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't, don't stress your heart, please. Yes, uh, yeah, yes. Well, right, Next, Phil. Week at least, I'm. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue with Scott. I love what he tells you to do. Don't do anything that stresses you out. And then he says, "So come back in two weeks, and we'll put you on the treadmill." Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes when Scott gets apoplectic, you know, sometimes I start worrying about him. You yeah. know, the other night, but I, you know, I, I enjoy what he does. It's. But, uh, you know, I don't want him to blow a gasket either. Yeah, no, I, but and he doesn't either, so, you know. Yeah. Some, that's why he doesn't call as much as he used to. Yeah. It was, no, it was, I, I think he's been uh, getting paid more to call into Jack's show. No, he calls here about the same amount, you know. It's, uh, you know. But anyway, um, uh so I just, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't know what do I, if I were one way or the other, if I placated a certain group of people, uh, I would get a much larger audience, you know, you really but, think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. If you weren't here and mm -hmm. I got really like conspiratorial and things like that. Right. Uh, yeah. I'd, the numbers would start jumping. But I, well, I refuse. I refuse to be. A, who's that? Who's that fat asshole on the right who does uh, the internet? Uh, uh, that, uh, you got the weird voice. That crazy guy. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, know I didn't know how long. Uh, Alex Jones. Alex yeah, Jones. Alex, Alex Jones. Jones. If I were the Alex Jones of the left, uh, I would. I would have a ton of people. Right. You know. Just completely conspiratorial. You know, you know, the funny thing is, is uh, like MSNBC and many of the shows that are there that were the Alex Jones of the left, they didn't get a very large audience in comparison. I don't to think anybody was the Alex Jones of the left. I, I don't think anybody at MSNBC. Ed, Ed, Ed got, at, at, what? On Ed, the left. That Ed, guy, Ed Schultz. Uh, Schultz. Yeah. yeah. People on the left don't really believe in fairy tales. That's why. Uh, you see, we think that. Everything that the left is thinking is a fairy tale. <laughs> you know, that, that's you why see, you it, believe in fairy tale. It's amazing that, you know, we, we look at the same thing, but we hear something different. Alex said the other night, you know, uh, my humor, for instance, that it, it doesn't come across to uh, people on the left. And yet, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's, uh, and many people I know think I'm very funny. But uh, really, can you really? can you can you give us their names and send us their addresses so we can come out and talk to them and get them help? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh -oh. But uh, like oh, the, uh, the uh, bump on the street thing. Now, now here comes a guy who could be the Alex Jones of the left if we really let yeah. him. Brian With Tourette's. Brian. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Hello, Brian. He hello. How are you, Brian? 
What? 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 <laughs> Ice pop, Can huh? Ryan? What? What are you eating? Your mic isn't on. Nobody's mic is on. No, today. your mic that, isn't on. Ice pop. Uh, we yeah. all had those as kids. I ate one today. Really? Yeah, because I had some extra f from my from my colonoscopy. Oh, so, so I ate one. Oh, okay. <laughs> is that what they're using these days? No, you can't eat food. So I was sucking like popsicles and stuff the day before. You can't hear you, Brian. Brian can't figure out why we can't hear him either. No. Maybe you should go closer. No, yeah. he, maybe shout out the window. We might be able to hear you better. Wait a minute. Are you there? Put your face right up to the speak to the microphone. Go into your preferences. Maybe your microphone's turned. Right off. this way. Yeah. Hey, you know, last night should have been called the slapback show. Oh, it was it's just. Uh, you here tonight? No slapback at all. Yeah. I know. Nothing. You know. Well, if, if I get a different uh, mixer, I'm going to have to learn how to set it up with the mix minus. And when I do, I'm going to write it all down and send it to you. I don't need the mix minus. There, yeah, well, I, it, Skype that would not have minus. solved that would not have solved that problem last night. Skype has a mix minus that's very weak. No, but if I had a mix minus, that wouldn't have solved the problem last night because you're still using their mix minus. Don't you understand? No, well, you you are you, and you are. You Miranda showed me how to do it. And that's how I set mine up. Yes, but you don't do a show like I do. And and I'm telling you, the problem we had last night, if I had mix minus here, you would. St I have mix minus here, oddly enough. The way I've set it up, it, it for some reason, it is mix minus. Okay, so, you know, okay. But, but uh, uh, it, 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 even if I do, it did have mix minus in here for sure. It <clears> wouldn't <throat> have solved the problem that we had last night. Huh. I can't figure out how to make this work anymore. I can't play anything through this board, and you you hear it. Really? Coming through Skype? Nope. Don't know how to do it. I, I took this thing apart when I moved, broke the studio down, set everything up, and it's not set up. It wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to do a show because it nothing plays through. I tried to. If I try to play something through here, it doesn't. It won't come well, through. I have everything just going through the board, and the board goes into the machine, and the machine plays it and you hear it you know so. what? what however if i play something uh if i play something off this machine you know i have to play it off another machine for you to hear it well probably. that's it i used to be able to play i used to be able to go to like um cnn yeah. and play a clip that you guys would hear yeah. now if i play anything off the studio computer nobody hears anything if yeah. i bring another source in you'll yeah. hear it okay but yeah. brian have you figured out what's wrong Yes, it's that's that's the thing. You need no. to have another source to okay. be able to. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Enough board. of that. I don't like to get into the technical talk because nobody out there wants us to get into the technical talk. That's worse than you being le right, right wing. Uh, <laughs> Brian, what's your problem? Go into your preferences. See? His mix minus is broken. Right. What? He's, he's doing a oh, jerking right. off motion. Like this. <laughs> Yeah, it, what's happening is if you go into your preferences money. in Skype, go, have any money. Go, go into tools and look at your audio and see if it's on and if it's working, you know, because that might be the problem you have. Hey, what do you need a board for anyway? I, I, go, I take my USB mic and just put it right into the computer and I do like three podcasts right from yeah. there. What do I need a board but, for? Because, well, be, be, because it's a fan, it needs phantom power. Well, you could get a you could get a, a device that'll give you phantom power, and you oh, can. Oh, I, I have a I have a Zoom H7. I, yeah. I can run I it off that. And I, I don't get it. I have a board that's fifth, 20 years old, and it has phantom power in it, Phil. Yeah, well, that most boards do have. But phantom. he doesn't need phantom power if all he has to do is hook a USB mic into his computer. I or, know. Yeah, it works great. That, he yeah. was asking, but it's a it's a different kind of mic. Oh, okay. It, 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 so, it, it sounds just as good as yours, Phil. I'm sure it does. Yeah. He has a better voice than me. Yeah, and he looks better, too. Yeah, and he can sing. And he's thinner <laughs> than you are. Why, thank you. And he, he, he's a better actor than you are. You know. Yeah, well. God bless America. Oh, he Trump didn't know that. Trump didn't know that song. Yeah. yeah. No shit. It is amazing that that Brian cannot find out why his sound isn't working, and it works all the other times. 
is your, figure is, it out is your mic time. plugged in? Is he using his phone or his? Uh, I don't know what phone. he's using. Well, we just lost him. Yeah. He'll be. He'll come he back and the thing. He said we'll be right back. Yeah, he, it'll be working. Boy, we have hardly anybody listening to us tonight. I'm not going to even post this on Facebook. Fuck all of y'all. You know, <laughs> I, I just enjoy talking with friends. Uh, well, what I what I heard today on the news by uh, 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 who's that senator uh, Mark Warner. Uh, he was saying that Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg weren't exactly up front with uh, the, the, uh, the on the interview that they did b before the Congress. And uh, also uh, when he was interviewed by the uh, Europeans, yeah. I guess uh, there were there were some issues with um, uh, a, a Chinese version of Facebook. Uh, or I, I forgot what they called the name of that company, but uh, they were Facebook was selling. Well, you know, them they were talking about access. Facebook doing business with China, and I'm thinking, all I know is when I was in China, and it's still true, you can't use Facebook in China. That's but a they, book. They were selling some data uh, to uh, yeah, but to what this were they company? doing business with a country that won't, won't even carry their sis, their 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 service? Yeah, that's well, what didn't make sense to me. I would have told them to blow it out their hole, you know. I can you can you, uh, hey, Brian? How are you doing? Have can you, you hear me now? Yes, we oh, can yes. hear you now. All right, turn it down a little. Got a phone. Yeah. I'm using a phone. I've been using phones. That way, I can uh, sit here comfortably in this chair, in this couch rather, in this living room rather than sitting behind a computer desk. Yeah. Uh, not unlike what now, I don't know if you heard Damien tonight, but Damien oh. said he has to turn the show off whenever you're on. So you see all the people that I have that are, are, are including myself, who are, are chasing audience away. The only guy here who probably isn't chasing audience away is Jeff. You know, who yeah. can hate Jeff? Does anyone hate me? Does anyone ever hate me? I don't me? think anybody hates you either. Oh, right. no, because no. I'm, I'm typically... Uh, Outside of here, pretty uh, yeah, critical. You, you, other than your Jeffrey Silas's yeah, but, and other right wingers, other than Bill, does anyone hate me? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of hate you, but, but uh, I, don't, I, don't I don't think anybody on I don't think anybody on this panel hates anybody else. I think no, I can I say that in all I love honesty. You all, yeah. Uh, I mean, we all get, we all get along okay. Yeah, you know, but hey, I mean, is we, that a fire hazard uh, behind Brian? What do you mean? Uh, he's got about 15 plugs. Uh, <laughs> oh, this. You should see under this. You should see. Uh, you should see under my desk here. <laughs> yeah, but they're not electrical, are they? <laughs> you know, hey, Brian. I, I, Brian, are well, you wearing like in a reflective shirt or something with reflective yeah. patches on it? I am. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that is that for like, tonight? What are you? Have you been doing cross guard working work or something? Crossing guard work. No, it's tape. I worked oh. for a company called uh, First Student School Bus Driving. I did it for ah, five years. Your your school bus driving I kids go on Amazon <laughs> and skip the middleman and just use uh, just buy shirts that. Uh, oh, double off Brian. Ads. Brian, do the so, wheels on the bus go round and round? <laughs> <laughs> All the live long day. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a popsicle. Yeah, go get a popsicle. Go get a popsicle. All right. Yeah, go get yourself a popsicle. In fact, bring a couple back so we can all have one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, I guess he had to have the popsicles when he was doing the uh, uh, the colonoscopy. The yeah, but you can't have red. You can't have red uh, colored ones because. Uh, See, you know, after the operation that I had uh, a couple months ago, all they gave me was ice. Yeah, that, you yeah. know, Kaiser, they give you ice, you know, wherever he went. He has better insurance. They they gave him, uh, you know, uh, frozen there you treats. Uh, it... Lemon-flavored Italian ice or something? Yeah, I'm, there are certain things I miss by being on a diet, uh, and one of them is, is things like that, you know. And I wish they made uh, ices in diet flavor, uh, but they don't, you know. Uh, they can make well, the trouble is, I think with most of the stuff, you know, you can you can make most things taste really good, most desserts and things like that, without adding all that sugar. But for some well, reason, you know, and make it taste, people wouldn't know the sugar was missing. 
But they could use stevia. They can use stevia. Uh, they can use a lot of things which are so close to it that you'd never notice that right. it wasn't well, sweet. It's with sugar. Cake or whatever in America, it's nauseatingly sweet typically how it's made. But if I uh, go to Germany or Sweden, it's, you know, it's the lack of sugars that are used. Oh, yeah, the, the chocolate sweet. is much more tart. Yeah. Oh, it's so yeah. much better. They use way less sugar. Hey, yeah. hey this is only 40 calories. Oh, really? Only 40? It's a yeah. rock pop. <laughs> yeah, but how many? But how many carbs? Look at the box. How many carbs does it have? How many carbs uh, per 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 stick? I per, bet you it's twenty. Per I actually think that a lot of. I bet it's like free. fifteen. Twenty. Uh, ten grams. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a lot. Oh. That's and like how many servings is that one pop? What What'd you say, it's Rob? One serving, ten grams of carbs. What'd you say, Rob? Like Twenty grams, all you're supposed to have on a on a low carb diet. What, no, uh, uh, on, induction. You, uh, on induction. But once you you're, you're you know clear to go, I say you can do up to upwards to forty and not worry. Okay. But okay. I've been very careful lately, and I'm finally losing again. I'm now down to where I'm almost where I want to be. So anyway. You lose weight. You and it, lose oil. Every day I go into the gym. I do 25 minutes on that bike, and I say to myself, "Why the fuck am I doing this?" <laughs> it's much like this show, actually. <laughs> uh, you know, why the fuck am I doing this? It's well, pretty much your whole life. Really. Because I'm I'm sitting there pedaling today, and I'm watching a documentary on Netflix on prohibition, uh, and I'm just going saying to myself, "Why am I doing this?" Somebody told me this was good for me. But I don't feel any better. In fact, I feel slightly worse. Really? Yeah, I don't feel like, you know, and I do 25 minutes a day on it. I say I'm going to go in and just do 20. And I always do 25, sometimes 30. You Does know, it tell you how many you miles? Yeah, it tells you how many miles. With light weights? You, you can do some light weight lifting resistance. Uh, well, no, I do so. I, then I go do some of the machines. You oh, know, okay. for, especially oh, for my, I remember what I was going to say when I came on here and I couldn't get through because of the sound issue. I yeah. was going to because I heard you talking, you comparing me to uh, Alex Jones, comparing, calling me the left left wing version of Alex Jones. Yeah. Well, unlike <laughs> Alex Jones, I don't spew conspiracy conspiracy theories. R right. We leave that to Tim. Yeah. I don't think he does either. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're not conspiracy theories to you. Oh, they're bitter truths. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you listen to that young like turtle. Fact, like the fact that, uh, like, and, and Phil will like this. He'll actually agree with this. Like the fact that Obama took, uh, the Obama administration took our two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and exploded them into seven to include Syria and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh Muammar Gaddafi, uh, that, that Libya. Libya. Libya, yeah. Among other, among other, among other countries, that that that's a fact as well. He didn't prosecute he, he, he was a corporatist warmonger. He might have been, but is how is that a conspiracy? It's not. It's true. Just like uh, Trump is an un, is an unstable genius. <laughs> unstable, <laughs> unstable genius. He called unstable. himself a stable genius. <laughs> unstable kook. They're all fuck. Yeah. They're all fucking awful. Yeah. What is that? A cat? A dog. No, my dog. This is a dog. I thought it looked like a mangy cat. One of two. Oh, well, he's got. But dogs cats. always look like mangy cats. Do you ever notice that? Because somehow they can't get eat any piece of fur to go in the same direction. Yeah. I'm pissed at my dog. What? Oh, my really? My dog ate my three thousand uh, dollar thing that replaces my CPAP for my sleep apnea. And my damn insurance <laughs> company won't replace it for two years. So you I have, either have... Wait, wait, you're, wait let me get this out. straight. Your excuse when you called the insurance company was the dog ate my CPAP? No, no, I called, <laughs> I called the, dentist, the dentist that made it. She called the insurance company. She didn't tell them about the dog, I don't think. But she said, oh, no, they won't replace it for two years. So I have to wait a year and a half. Or, With your homeowner's insurance? No, I guess it wouldn't if it was your dog. Well, I won't tell. What can I tell the homeowner's insurance that someone stole it? Well, uh, yeah. then you gotta have a police report, stuff like that. That's a crime. Or what if I lost it? Uh, that's that's that counts. Well, I'll tell them I lost it. Yeah, they'll raise your homeowner's insurance and you'll pay. Yeah, for my it. three thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, when I was pulling into the hospital tonight or this afternoon? Yeah. A guy hit me in the fender. 
So, you <laughs> well, know. It's been a real good day for you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, when I when they did my blood pressure, I said, it may be up a little bit today. <laughs> well, I'm going for my yearly checkup, and um, I'm worried, of course, always about the PSA test. It always makes me worry, even though I'm not worried, you know, because he stuck yeah. that stick up my ass and actually looked at the prostate and didn't see anything wrong. But I still, I you know, I worry about uh, he's going to find something, and uh, but uh, you know, I'm I, all the ails that I have is just getting older. At your it's age, like a flashlight or something. No, mm-hmm. at your age, if they found something, they wouldn't do anything. Well, I mean, no. If I had a heart problem, they would do something about no, it. No, it, it, it could take twenty years for uh, for prostate cancer to uh, uh, to kill you. You know, I mean, oh, oh yeah, yet. oh yeah, yeah. I realize that, but on the other hand, I don't trust the urologist that I go to to be that honest. You know that that he likes to pad the bill when I go there by wanding me with all these. With the, he 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 never he's never stuck his finger up my ass, but he has done sonograms all over that area. Okay, Does it, it vibrate. No. So last time he shoved it up my ass and he actually looked at the thing with a sonogram thing and he, he can pretty much see everything in there. And then after it's over, he goes, come back and see me, and get another PSA test, come back and see me another six months. And I'm you going, why? Well, say no, Alex. What? I'll see you in a year. Yeah, but that's what I'm going to tell him this time. That's, I tell my doctor stuff like that. Yeah, I'll see you in a year. Fuck you. Not they they, they with, want to see I you every dentist. Si- I let them give me x-rays every time they want to. Oh, I, I only let them clean twice a year. Cleaning I get done three times a year, but they every year they hit me up for x-rays. And I say, no, I don't need x-rays every year. I have great teeth. You just want to give me x-rays because you know my company will pay for them. Well, But I don't want the yeah. radiation. Oh, okay. So I tell them no. Yeah. And they say they look at me like cross-eyed. Well, doctors today, though, do pad the bill. Every time yeah, this guy has, get, done, has, has done the sonogram thing with me, every time I look at the bill, it's $400. It's like if he, if he just stuck his finger up my ass, it would only be 50 And if I went uptown and hired a hooker, it would only be like less than that. So, you know. I told you I, I had changed doctors. I think I told you this story. Yeah. I When I moved, I had to change doctors, and I have this Hashimoto's thing, and so I need Synthroid. Every day I take Synthroid, yeah. so I have to get a blood work every year when my pills run out. You know, the doctor will give me a year's worth, and then every year around my physical, I get my blood test. Yeah. He checks, and then he adjusts it if necessary. So this time, I'm running out of pills. I call up a new doctor here in town, and I say, I need a, to, to come in and get a physical. I've got this Hashimoto's, and I need to get a prescription for Synthroid. I go in. They give me the blood test. They, they you know, I have this physical. And then I get, and, you know, I have, you know, wellness care. I don't get, I don't get charged for a physical. Mm-hmm. So then I get a bill in the mail from the blood clinic. And I'm like, what's this bill? I called my insurance company. I said, did my coverage change? And they said, no, your doctor didn't code it the right way. Call your doctor and let him change the code. So I called the doctor. I spoke to the yeah. the uh, you know the accounting group, mm-hmm. and I said, uh, this is what the insurance company said. She said, we'll talk to the doctor. The doctor said, no, I'm not going to recode it. And I said, well, you could kiss my ass goodbye because I'm not coming back. Why wouldn't they recode it? It's bullshit. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to be. Uh, he didn't want anybody to say he did something wrong. They hate that most doctors. They never wanted to say they did anything wrong. Oh, well, I see what you're saying. They, they, they hate they admit yeah. that. Uh, oh, they could code. They just don't admit that you did it wrong. There's two ways of doing it. You can code it the way they did, or yeah. code it that I don't have to pay for it. Right. Right. But no. Yeah. I said, you know what? That's great. I'll send you a check. Have a nice life. You will never see me again. And that's it. I hung up the phone. Wow. I don't like why I like Kaiser. You know, they get paid a salary. Uh, they might get a bonus. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Phil. What you're starting to describe to me is a love for a uh, uh, single payer or for no, uh, for it's a, 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 it, 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 no, 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 no. What you're describing. Uh, listen, Kaiser. Kaiser is what do you call it? Uh, 
Um, oh, Kaiser is an HMO. Oh, yeah, but, payer, HMO. But, it, but, it's, but it's basically, it was started by Kaiser as Kaiser. a very socialistic model for how you handle health. That uh, you know, people yes. come in and you have a bunch of doctors and they're all paid the same amount of money. It's called socialized medicine. That's the term I was yeah. looking for. You know, and it, and this wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me if finish. You were paying, if you were paying for my care. Wait, hold on a second. Everybody at Kaiser who subscribes to it is paying for your care. Okay. But, I but all I'm saying is it started out as an, as so, an experiment so with socialized you, medicine, and you like it. Yes. Okay. You for socialized medicine here, too. A little bit out of your taxes. What's the difference? There's a big difference uh, because uh, there's a lot of people that mm -hmm. don't pay taxes. And, you know, I choose to go to Kaiser. You don't have to choose hey, to go look, there. look, I'm not even working, and I paid just paid out $5,000 for taxes as an overpay of money that I had to give in. So don't give me that shit about it. I paid for taxes. Everybody, uh, taxes. I, uh, everybody sure. pays taxes. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, the, the truth is right. we have all kinds of socialized medicine in this country. The whole Veterans Administration is an example of socialized medicine. Uh, Medicare is socialized medicine. To say that we don't have it is a complete fallacy. And so I'm well, sick of to say that we don't have to, wait a minute, to say we don't have socialism is also another misnomer because the police yeah. department is socialism, the fire department is socialism. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, but the uh, the opportunities for people to make money or not make money in this country, uh, they're and they're free to choose what they want or they don't want. Uh, they they are free to choose whether they want to use a system like Kaiser or not. Uh, they don't. Have All to. I'm saying is is that you, you know you're saying all oh, those poor doctors uh, they, in England they, they only can make two hundred thousand dollars a year or whatever, which is not bad. But, but but I mean the thing with Kaiser is pretty much a model of social uh, you know socialized medicine as it's practiced in countries like England. I'm going to a, a medical supermarket rather than a medical individual and uh, and it's like one big practice when you go sometimes you go to a doctor and there might be a, a medical you're trying you're trying to put lipstick on a on a pig no, okay you know what you're doing is you don't true. understand what you're involved in you happen to just tell me you liked socialized medicine no i happen to tell you i liked the concern called kaiser that i deal with but i don't like anthem blue cross I don't want uh, to, to, to pay for that. I chose to pay for this, and but that's my choice. If I had socialized medicine, I couldn't choose anything. Yeah, well, you know. Yes, that's Phil. Yes, Jeff. That's not how, much, how much does that have to making your decision, the fact that Kaiser is a lot cheaper than the other one? I don't know that it's a lot cheaper. I'm paying $1,100 a month so uh, for just me. But the the thing about what I liked about you shouldn't Kaiser be, you shouldn't be having to pay eleven hundred dollars a month for health insurance. Well, you well, are. I mean, it wasn't, that, it, it wasn't it, before Obamacare. What? When, oh, when, wait a under, minute. Oh. Uh, before Obamacare, the same insurance was, and it was actually better coverage was less than five hundred. I got to tell you. Well, before Obamacare, I remember I, I I actually lost my job at Sirius before Obamacare, and uh, we were paying out. God. Uh, we 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 I we were told when I left that if I wanted to go off Cobra because I would only have Cobra for a certain amount of time, that it would be like twenty five hundred dollars a month, yeah. you know. So don't don't t don't say things about Obamacare. That's bullshit. And uh, don't the blame insurance, Obama. The insurance companies. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, you. Phil. The insurance companies would use any excuse to raise their prices. Well, they okay. use that excuse because my insurance went up 30% in one year, right is at, at the time that they instituted Obamacare. But I love Obama. He's just wonderful. He was. You know? He was compared to this turd. Uh, well, uh, yes, uh, yes. Wait, wait, wait a minute. minute. Okay, now, Phil, time for you to be quiet. Ray has to talk. Okay. Hey, uh, Obama Alex, proposed a completely different plan that exists than actually exists right now. The Republicans forced him to cut out everything that mattered from the thing, and he just took what he could get. He even said that. 
Could so he, to call it Obamacare is bullshit. You Couldn't he, he have vetoed it? No, no, no. He wanted to get. He wanted. He wanted to get something. That he wanted a start. At least it's a start. That's what he always said. Yeah, but and the Republicans the, were bound and determined to destroy it, and they did. The Republicans no, took a fairly good plan know, and gutted it. Yes, Tim. You, Tim. You know who started to kill it in the beginning? Who? It was Rubio, because even before S Trump took over, they Rubio got the risk corridors killed because that helped keep the premiums down. Because when you put all these sick people on new plans, you're going to have to have, have some subsidy for the premiums for a few years until they get better by going to the doctor regularly instead of dying without medical care. And the risk corridors was, was pushed and removed by Rubio that set the groundwork for this week where the Department of Justice is arguing that Obamacare is unconstitutional. They're arguing against the government. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know. How could they do that? Obama was such a nice guy. It isn't yeah, crazy. he was. He, he, well, b believe me, it was a he was a much classier guy than the one we got in. You know. Trump, yeah, Trump has an easy agenda. Do everything that Obama didn't do and undo everything Obama did. That's all. That's also in his simple brain he can handle. Teach him to make fun of Trump. Everybody in the world hates us. Obama brought us back to where we were respected in the world, yep. and uh, Trump has trashed it in 18 months. Uh huh. And that's a good thing, right, Phil? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because uh, the people that respected us didn't respect us. Uh, no, like Canada? Us. Like Canada? Yeah, they, well, they came to us during disasters to help us out, Phil. Uh, uh, Phil who's going to help us now? Phil, Phil, Nobody's going to help us now. We, we've already got tariffs from Canada. Uh, at they were, I think those aluminum tariffs were 16 percent, and then uh, they raised it to 25. Uh, you know, it, it's there's an unfair, there was an unfair exchange of uh, trade, not only with Canada but also but, with Mexico because it, NAFTA it, was such a one-sided agreement. I, I don't have any problem with them getting better agreements, but when you don't come to the, the support of your allies and you treat them like crap. You're not going to negotiate that's, or get that's a anything. Thing. Trump said, hey, I am going to uh, roll back and put these tariffs on if uh, we can't come to an agreement. Canada didn't come to an agreement, and he did what he said he was going to do. But he doesn't know anything about tariffs and their effect. They were done unscientifically. They, weren't, they didn't work out the details. And he's used to negotiating okay. all right. on a scam all right. all right. real estate. All right, market. Uh, uh, enough of that. Did you hear the one statement he made today that just amazed me? Somebody asked him, so how are you uh, studying for uh, the, uh, the uh, conference next week uh, in Singapore? And he said, uh, I, I haven't studied for it. I don't need to study for I it. Heard, I heard he was listening to GabNet. No, but it, 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 you see, I'm trying to bring a truth here, and you make a joke that isn't even funny. Uh, the, well, fact, you're, 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 it's funny. the fact of the matter yeah, is he, he admitted about he admitted that he's too lazy to do any work doing prep work for this conference. Phil, the reason it's not funny is the reason it's not funny, Phil, is because every time a point is brought up that where, where Alex, for instance, just stated something truthful, you try to shun it off with some ridiculous well, humor that makes no sense because you don't want to face the truth. I, don't know he's not hey, I got a question for Phil. <laughs> what? He, he, he said he's not. He hasn't he hasn't uh, he hasn't boned up on it, so to speak. Yeah. How yes. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Do. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jack is chomping at the bit here. Yes, Jack. Oh, Jack is not chomping. Uh, I think the uh, real test of where we are right now is what uh, the French prime minister said today. And that was in preparation for the um, the G uh, the G seven. Yeah, he said like he's telling everybody, look, no leader lasts forever. But we can hope so. You know, and, and, then, he, and then he took his shoe off, pounded on the table, and said, "We will crush you." <laughs> <laughs> and 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 look what Time Magazine, the the biggest bastion of American. You know, journalistic mediocrity is doing with their uh, uh, their cover coming up next week. Trump, Trump, looking in a mirror and seeing himself as king. 
Yeah, that's about right. Hey, can, can Phil explain something that Trump said? I don't Trump, know. This, I heard. When, when he went to FEMA, he said 16,000 people went out in their boats to watch the hurricane. The guy's got dementia. Nobody went out in any boats to watch a hurricane. They even had people on from the disaster people. What is he talking about? Well, I he thought did they came out in their boats to help those that were stranded. But that's not what he said. He said oh, 16,000 and I know stupidly went out in their boats to look at the to watch the hurricane. Exactly Tim, what he said. I didn't hear what he said, but I can yeah. guarantee you, if you heard it, it wasn't what he said. Brian? No, no. Wait, 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 hold I'm, on a second. Bri it up on a video. Bri Brian has his hand up. Yes, Brian. Hey, hey, don't attack me, Phil. Why not? I can watch a video and know what I said. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Brian has his hand up. I uh, like. Uh, I was just giving Tim the floor there because he's taking. A, he was taking Phil to school, which I always enjoy listening to. But nevertheless, yeah, he, uh, yeah, Jack, he, start attacking why, me. he complained. He got attacked. <laughs> he got attacked. So you, you didn't attack the <laughs> issue. You attacked like, me. Oh boy. Which yeah, I don't really care, but it's a waste of time. This anyway, is what, this is what happens uh, when the host uh, loses control of the show. The two of you, jump ball. Everybody's one and one now. Yeah, I'm not yeah, supposed to yell. Chris, you've been Anyhow, quiet. Any uh, any thoughts? Uh, just wanted to say real quick to Phil that uh, the fact they didn't line pass you into the gamma camera is a pretty good sign. Uh, I've I've had uh, three or four people I know go go to through the cardiology thing in the last couple of years, and yeah. a lot of them were like, "Hey, let's just get you in right now. Let's not waste any time." And and one person with the technology going on right now, um, one person I know, they actually gave them something called deep hypothermic circulatory arrest and I was like what's that I, they do I was that in the waiting room in lieu, you heard of that yeah they do that in lieu of the can, uh, of the treadmill for one reason or another some people they mm -hmm. can't put them on the treadmill to speed their heart up Wait, we have an, we have oh, another we have another person in this group who's had heart problems yes jack yeah you know i've had that done to me but i want to say this you know phil just wait a few more years, and you will have the best insurance you ever had. Yeah. Well, they call Medicare, which is you know why they didn't line past me, Chris, into into socialized. That. Because I go to Kaiser. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's better in Southern California, though. Kaiser's yeah. better down there. Yeah. They just give you an aspirin and wrap you in aluminum. <laughs> Yes, yeah, the, but yeah. look, Brian has had his hand up for the longest time, and nobody will shut up long enough to let him talk. Yes, Brian? Make this real quick. Two things. One, I'll, t I'll take Phil to school on this, too, as, well, as far as comedy goes. One is that, uh, from what I understand, you have to play to your audience. Here's one, here's, here's one bit of comedy that I think everyone will enjoy. Uh, the uh, cover of the Time magazine that uh, Jack brought up, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that was decided on compared to the uh, rejected one, which is a picture of Melania standing naked, <laughs> looking into a mirror and wanting to have sex with it, considering the fact that, that that's what she's been doing in her younger years during the Playboy years. But the, and, and then there's the hypocrisy of the whole like uh, Rudy Giuliani saying that he doesn't respect porn stars. Oh, fuck him. Oh, did you? The other thing I wanted to bring. The other thing I wanted to bring. Okay. I sent a link on Skype. I sent I sent a link on Skype, totally unrelated, but I just because I, I, I know uh, Rob Alfano, if he wants to look at the messenger, or uh, and, and Alex, you both have helped me out a long time ago when I first started calling in with that name that tune. Mm -hmm. There was a there's some other music on there that's uh, during the Lake Tahoe scenes of mm -hmm. the Godfather Part Two, the mu the orchestral music that plays. Mm -hmm. I'm really dying to know what the title of those songs are. That they're playing. Well, I'll have the, to listen to the it. YouTube link in the uh, Skype Messenger. Okay, I'll try and see if I can figure that out. Anyway, here's the here's here's the story. The, the interesting story today. So Rudy Giuliani goes to Israel, uh, and he gives a speech. Yeah, and, uh, and in this speech, somebody what well, it's I mean it's like a press conference. Somebody asks him. First of all, he said Stormy Daniels isn't credible because she's a porn star. Okay, you know he's a philanderer too. Yeah, uh, and and then. He says, uh, somebody asked, well, is, is the president bothered by her accusations? And he says, oh, no, she's not bothered at all. She knows it's not the truth. No, Milan, they asked if Melania. Yeah, yeah that's would, what I said. Yeah, I well, if, she was, if she was bothered by it. And she said, uh, he said, no, she isn't. She is, uh, 
you know, she's not bothered by it, and uh, you know, so and and then Melania, what Melania wrote a, a tweet to the effect of, "Rudy Giuliani doesn't know what he's talking about. He's never talked to me." Now, what mm. does that say to you? Pathological liar. No, wait a minute. What does that say to you? It Spin. says that she's kind of saying. Yes, I am bothered by the whole Stormy Daniels sure. thing. Well, I meant I meant uh, Giuliani. I didn't mean Melania. I yeah, but Giuliani. I'm saying that Melania then writes a tweet saying Giuliani doesn't know what he's talking about. In fact, he's never talked to me. Yes, about Jack. Bishop? Jack Bishop. Wait, Stormy, wait, wait, wait a minute, well, Jack Bishop. What Stormy Daniels should just say in response to Giuliani? I may be a porn star, but you're a lie. Uh, but you, but you're a lawyer, and we all know how l lawyers lie every day. Right, Ju Tim. Giuliani. You had something you wanted to say, Tim. I think Juliana somehow worked in the word "fakatka" when in his response to Fakatka. 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 Yeah. For crap, isn't it? You know something? Actually, uh, who's that lawyer for Stormy Daniels? What's his name? Um, Avenatti, the rat. Avenatti. Uh, do you know that <laughs> that uh, that that Giuliani has been on the air more than Avenatti now? He suddenly, as a lawyer, took a clue from Avenatti. Hello, Renee. Hey, Re full house. Hey. Full house. Hey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but no, he he's he he's uh, he's around town more than a cheap suit, uh, Giuliani these days. You know? He is a cheap suit. And yeah. That's because Avenatti is protecting himself from all those other lawsuits and bankruptcies and uh, the oh, other yeah. bullshit. Yeah, sure, Avenatti's a bad guy. Yeah. So Phil, it's like a rat. You never seen, you know, like well, a rat. Oh, talk about rats. Look at Giuliani. He looks like a weasel. I know. How could you compare? He looks like Skeletor. Yeah, that's what Giuliani looks like. Yeah, the, yeah. Just because one looks like one, he does look like a rat. Well, Avenatti. maybe maybe they're all lawyers. That's the reason why. That's true. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, Renee. I think the reason you don't like Avenatti is because he's actually dancing circles yeah. around people. He's doing nothing but uh, trying to convict any somebody in the court of public opinion. Well, what do you sure think part. Trump does? You know, in fact, sure. uh, uh, what's his name? The guy that wouldn't take the <laughs> knee, the, fo uh, the football player. Uh, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. His lawyers are thinking of suing the White House, saying that yes. they have deprived Kaepernick of an income by their, inc by their insinuations of his lack of patriotism and I, that he I, can't I, get a job because of the White House. I hope Good. he sues. I hope he does, too. I, I, I hope, hope he wins. I hope the guy doesn't take it pro bono. May wow. he pay. May he pay through the nose for what hey, he what, did. What, hey, Who, what Trump? He, was, you. he exercised his, oh, his rights. Oh, what is that? Hey Phil, I got I got homework for Phil. Uh, he needs to look much. up Giuliani's client list for the last twenty years. Some of the most disgusting characters you could dream of. That's what most attorneys system. deal with. They, they're the lowest of the low, and they work with the lowest of the low. Oh, wait a minute. First, of, first, first of all, first of all, what, 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 are you, what are you trying to show us, Renee? What is that you bought? You this is first off. This is your fault that I bought it. That Although that's the first thing, and it's one of since you have such a great hand thing for yeah, your yeah. yeah. So for my finally, GoPro. there's one for the iPhone. And oh, so I, I see. Oh. Uh, how much did that yeah. cost? It was about 130. Oh, that's not bad. And I haven't opened it yet. It's a steady cam for your iPhone. I'm, uh, I I may buy myself great. one that's of those. What's it called? What's the brand name? It's called Osho. What's it called? O S M O. O S M O. Okay. And it's, you could actually, it's you could actually be an a unboxing. Film on that thing. Huh? Is this going to be an unboxing? Well, I was asking Alex because it's still got its label and nobody but me paid for it. So there's no endorsement problems with this. He doesn't issue. have a problem with endorsements on this show. Well, here's the, pro okay. here's the, here's the problem. We only have about 11 minutes left. And, uh, oh, no, we don't have to do this tonight. Could you, could you hold off till tomorrow night and, and call sure. earlier and we can open, unbox it? I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Well, too bad. No, yeah. well, it, very good, actually, now that I think about it. Um, yeah, uh, well, if you have another show, like uh, when, when I'm not there, you're watching paint dry, it's, it's great, you know. Yeah, yes, uh, Jack. 
Yeah, I just wanted to ask this to go back to this thing about Kaepernick and the, the knee and all of that nonsense. Why do we expect performers, which are what football <clears throat> players are, why why do we ask them to? Why do we play the national? Uh, yeah, anthem? I've, I've asked that question over and over again. Why, what are we doing playing the national anthem at a fucking football game? I mean, we don't yeah. play it in front of a rock concert. Do That's we? right. The no, fans. we don't. I think it's for the fans. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. I think it's right. For the oh yeah. 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 Players. How is it for the fans? Fans it's want to see part, the damn game. Oh, it's, huh? it's part of the show. Oh, see, Jack's right. I, you know, those football tickets are hella expensive, and I want to see the football game. I don't give a frickin' you know, problem you with know, the fans are sitting, getting their last beers in at the uh, at uh, while the anthem is playing. They're not even in their seats. No, I don't think There's so. It creates a oh, unity. It's uh, amongst it's the fans. Bullshit. Bullshit. For years, I thought the last uh, the last words of the national anthem were "play ball." Did you ever hear Albert Brooks rewriting in the national anthem? Yes, right. It's, no. Oh, it's hysterical. Yeah. Really? They, they don't yeah. call they don't call them NFL owners for nothing. And remember, we didn't have a national anthem until nineteen thirty six. Uh, thirty eight, wasn't it, Alex? Thirty six, something like that. Thirty six, yeah. okay. Yeah. We didn't have socialism in government until 1936. Oh, in other words, we didn't have uh, libraries. We didn't have fire departments. We didn't have no, police. We didn't have FBI. We didn't have street works department. All of that. Oh, my uh, friend, labor before then, Phil. That's what I was just is say. a form of socialism, <laughs> and I know damn good and well if your carpet store is burning up, you're going to be the first person to reach with the phone and call the fire department. Yeah, uh, no, no, he's going because he's because he's not not a, not, not for socialism. He's going, it, huh? and I wouldn't call until it was down to the ground. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Are you saying something about like Jewish story. lightning? Yeah, and uh, uh, Jewish barbecue, lightning is that uh, what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. I, I, I have a friend who's Hispanic and he said it took his dad two attempts to burn the house down when he was a boy. Damn. <laughs> you, ever, you ever hear of Heskett's uh, Carpet Coliseum in Oakland? Yeah. Uh, yeah well, cool. that guy burned his place down for the insurance money and then when he got caught, he put a rattlesnake in his lawyer's mailbox. <laughs> he wound up in jail. Back when Damn. I was a boy, there was a, a, a furniture company yeah. in uh, uh, Oakland on San Leandro yeah. called Bruce Furniture Company. And every week in their commercial, they talked about what kind of disaster they had had the week before. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Oh, so you could get better oh. prices? <laughs> I forgot well, to I tell you guys. I, 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 rattle, I, rattle off. I, bu like I, bought, I bought a yeah. subscription to something today. I now yeah. have VPN. Oh, who, who did you go with? I went with a company called, uh, uh, let me see here. What's the name of it again? Uh, it, and this is uh, Rob's fault, by the way. Rob and the MLB are driving me crazy. Uh, I need to use the VPN. I use it all the time. Well, this is, it was, it, it's your phone it, Nord, your... Nord is the one I'm using. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I use uh, private internet access. Well, I, the thing is, I tried it tonight, and I, I can't sign into my bank. I have to turn it off signing into my bank. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I use petroleum jelly. Yeah. <laughs> but what's it good for? Absolutely nothing. <gasps> uh, no, I mean, outside of illegally downloading movies. You know, so, so I bought this new device. Yeah. I have two now. This is my favorite streaming device, Apple. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh Amazon uh, Fire, Fire Stick. It's a Fire, well, Fire Stick. Do you know they have the? You know what they just came out with today? It's, and it, you can uh, order Fire them. Cube. The Fire Cube, which Fire is Cube. like uh, Echo. You can tell it to change channels and tell it what movie you want to see or what tape you want, what video you how, want it to play. How, how different? How different is that from the Amazon Prime service? You know, do you get something different? No, no. The, you have the Prime service on top of this. You uh. install on, you get Prime on this. You yeah. get all the apps like you do on Roku or Apple TV. There's more apps. Well, it's kind of like the Roku right. Stick. Is but, what I have is. Chromecast. It's the but, same thing. But there, there's Chromecast. a program. Hold on. on. There's a program you could put on here called Kodi. K O D I. Yeah. Uh. And on top of Kodi, you can put all kinds of streaming. I could watch 
television from all over the world. I could watch movies. I could watch television 24-hour a day TV show channels. Mm-hmm. Really? What is the this? Things you could get on here. I have one. I just took this was in my theater. I just took it out and I put the I, I just got a fire TV. This is going to go on my deck. On the TV, I, I so I could watch the baseball games. Yeah. This is the best thing I've ever bought as far as streaming is concerned. So what you need is an internet connection? An Android. This is an Android device. So I installed the Android, uh, 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 the Android VPN on here, and now I can stream all kinds of stuff on it that is just amazing. I watched all of Homeland on it. Last week, because I hadn't seen Homeland since like season two. So, in other words, so what you're saying what is you, you can now you, you, you can now illegally watch stuff. Well, yeah. you, you, you <laughs> can. It's available if you choose to do that. <laughs> but yeah. you can pay for these stuff too. But Rob, how much? Oh, Fauna sounds like how the lawyer. For what? How much for the for the device? I I got oh, a Father's Day the, present I got to pick out for myself. This, this is thirty nine dollars. And uh, the and then they also sell uh, here's a little like a USB mini port and you can connect this you can buy for fourteen bucks uh, you can buy the Ethernet and let me tell you it makes a difference I bought the Ethernet uh, adapter so I can plug it into the the Ethernet port and get you know full bandwidth so when you go to hit watch something streaming it doesn't buffer yeah it just yeah. it's there I'll have to pass that on to my no good grandchildren and stepkids that I want that for Father's Day. It what, is really what does cool it mean to computer. what does it mean that you gotta use an Android uh, it's an Android operating it's system. Not an iOS. If right. you have an Apple you can't use it. You have to Yeah. It, it, we're left behind on this one. Apple No it. no you can you can uh, if you use Chrome off your computer uh, uh, you can stream it from Chrome from Chrome. Really? Oh, if you have an iOS, I do it with my Chromecast all the time. So you can only watch this on a computer. You can't watch it on. TV? No, no. What I'm saying this... is, is uh, if, if the app you're using doesn't go directly to the device, like like he has there, uh, so uh, you, as long as you use Chrome and you hit the two little dots on the right, you can stream anything from your computer straight to the thing that's stuck we, in. We the just TV. lost Jack because he has to go ready. HDMI to connection. This is the stick is an HDMI connection. Right. Yeah, that's what mine is too. Yeah, and that's what that's what the that's what the Roku stick is too. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's they just, all basically do the same thing. Yeah, except that this, I'll tell you awesome. what I got myself though. I, I do have uh I got, I got myself two four K uh Apple TVs because I have found that I like it a lot because it has VLC, the video playing program in it, and oh, it I plays and it plays every video format. Whereas on the other machines, they don't play every video format. And so. it's open source. VLC is. Well, so yeah. is this yeah. completely open source? Anything you could put on an Android device, you can put on here. I Damn. like it. I do enjoy it. It Very won me over from iOS. Well, then, iOS, up, then upload uh, upload iOS, from the Google we Store. Need to cooks from, to take a shit. From the Google Store, we have the uh, the GabNet uh, uh, app, you know, which is still working, by the way. And and uh, if you, if you have an Android phone, you can just install it. Go to the Google Store and go GabNet, and it will uh, send oh. you to it. And and I forgot to mention this has a remote that is Alexa red. So you just when you're watching it, you press the remote and you say, uh, put on uh, whatever. Like, you know, you could search by actor. You can yeah. you can do all kinds of stuff just by pressing the remote and speaking to it. Yeah, well, my, wow. I, all I've got to say is that my, my Alexa has Alzheimer's uh, because I will be watching television. All of a sudden, she starts blurting something out and we have no <laughs> idea what triggered it. You know, hey, listen, I gotta go uh, because uh, Jack and Amy are next with the intersection that's followed at one o'clock in the morning by Connections or Conniptions or whatever that show is called. And uh, then, uh, so we gotta say goodbye to all of you. Uh, we won't see you tomorrow night, right, Phil? No. Okay. Uh, we will see you tomorrow night, I hope, Jeff and uh, uh, Chris. Great having you here. Uh, Tim, thank you for so much for calling. I know you gotta fight for space because we can't see you. Uh, Ray, thank you very much as uh, to thanking Rob Alfano, who is always great to have here. And of course, Brian, the show just wouldn't be as earthy without you. And of course, Renee, and tomorrow night, call us and we'll unbox that thing, okay? All right. 
Hey, everybody, wave goodbye to the audience, will you? Ah, there they go. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, uh, let me see here. Well, let me uh, hang up on them because uh, I got to get rid of them so that I don't have to. Uh, um, if I left them at this at this point like this, they would uh, be talking to each other. But I get rid of them now, and now they're all off. And I think it's all ready now for the uh, for the intersection, which is next. I'm Alex Bennett. That's it. I'll see you tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, same time. Oh, don't forget Damien at uh, 9.30, uh, at 10 o'clock uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life in the meantime. You see her. You tell her I love her, okay? Bye.